All right, glad to be here. Uh, I'm going to start my presentation with a quiz. So in the next slide, I will ask a question, and there will be four choices, and you'll have to guess which one is correct. All right? So let's get started. So if you smile more, are you more likely to have, number one, successful marriage? So people who think it's number one, raise your hand. OK, four or five, six, seven, OK. Uh, and how about make more money, number two? OK, a lot more, all right. How about number three, have a job? Almost the same. And number four, live longer. Oh, well, that's probably the most of you. Uh, what if I were to add one more choice, which is all of the above? <laughs> and you would change your vote to number five, right? And you would be correct. And in the next few slides, I will give you examples of why all of these cases are true. So the first one was successful marriage. Some researchers have analyzed images of people from college yearbook. And based on the smile patterns, how wide is the smile, the intensity of the smile, they could predict how likely they're going to be successful in their marriage. And the second point was jobs. Sorry, making more money. In America, more than three million people rely on jobs where tips are the main source of income. For example, waiter, waitresses, bartenders. And the research shows that in those jobs, if you smile more, you make more money. Number three was getting a job. Recently, Holiday Inn had a few openings for which they had more than 5,000 people apply. Holiday Inn narrowed down 5,000 people to 500 based on one simple rule. And the rule was, let's eliminate all the guys who smile less than four times in the interview. In other words, people who smiled more got to stay for the second round. And the last one, live longer. Some researchers from Wayne State University have done some work where they looked at the images of baseball players, and they looked at the smiles, and they found a correlation between players who appeared to be smiling in the pictures had lived longer than others. So hopefully by this time, I've convinced you that smiling is useful, and we should smile more often. And now I'm going to tell you about a project that we have done that's all about smiles. So last year, 2011, was MIT's 150th anniversary. To celebrate it, we had three months long festival. We called it Festival of Art, Science, and Technology, or FAST. So during FAST, we had a lot of art installations, a lot of events for which a lot of people came by, including Mario and others. So campus was always populated. And we asked this question to ourselves, is it possible to measure during the festival which part of MIT is the happiest in real time? We also wondered whether it's possible to capture data for a long period of time and perhaps gain further insights on how people in MIT behave. And that's what MIT Mood Meter is all about. So the idea of Mood Meter is pretty simple. We put cameras at four different locations of MIT, and as people walk by, we looked at whether they're smiling or not. And we do that by connecting the laptop, sorry, connecting the cameras to a laptop. So the camera would send 30 images per second to the laptop. The laptop with some software that would magically run some algorithm to determine how many people are currently present in that image and how many of them are smiling. And that's it. We also would take the live feed from the camera and project it into an open space as part of interaction. We also had a second component to our project, which is a website, which is interactive. So the two pieces of information, how many people are currently there and how many of them are smiling, get sent to a website where we take this information to convert the map of MIT as a heat map of smiles in real time. So any given time from any part of the world, you could log into our website and find out where you want to go to party at MIT. So when you propose the idea of installing cameras on campus, we had to get permission from the securities office. So we sent our proposal to the securities office, and they emailed us after two days saying that 
I'm sorry, we cannot let you install cameras on campus. Uh, it's intrusive. Uh, people are going to have a lot of complaints, so you can't do this. Uh, so we are disheartened, of course. So we went there and set up an appointment, and we told them that we want to respect people's privacy. We do realize that cameras are intrusive, and that's why in our image, sorry, in our project, we are not going to store any images. We're going to have a big sign that says, this is a live feed. No images are being recorded. The two things we're going to record are how many people are currently present and whether they're smiling or not. After hearing that, uh, their statement of, you can't do this, changed to, this is great, let's do this, and how can you help? Uh, and I thought there was a great take home message for us because despite cameras being intrusive device, if you make it transparent about what you're gonna collect and what are you gonna do with that data, people, people become very accepting of it. So these are the four spots where you install uh, mood meters. The first one is the Media Lab which is an academic department in MIT. Since we are grad students of Media Lab, we had to be a bit more biased and put it in there. Uh, the second one was, uh, which is right here, well, sorry, the text isn't legible here. So the second one was the Infinite Corridor. Uh, as the name suggests, it's a pretty long corridor that connects 80% of MIT buildings internally. Uh, the third one was the Stata Center. Uh, this, is, this building houses computer science. And the fourth one was uh, the student center where a lot of people gather up to socialize. So we felt we can always talk about mood meter, but it wouldn't be complete if we don't give you a live demonstration of what it likes to interact with mood meter. And in this slide, um, we're going to turn it on and let you know how, what it likes to interact with mood meter. Uh, so right now, we're going to project it back into the computer. And there is a, uh, there is a camera here which going to look at you. And then we're going to see what it does. Save your smiles for the demo. <laughs> and have all the lights on, please. Yes, great. Any moment now. All right, there you go. So as you can see, whenever it finds a face, it draws a yellow blob on it. And as soon as it starts smiling, it becomes green. And on the, on the right, you have a barometer that tells you how smiling. <laughs> and if, if it goes above 50, something happens. So let's see if you can make it above 50. One more, just smile. So you get a bow tie when it's above 50 to give people for their incentive to smile more. All right, you get the idea. So we're going to move on and, and hang it over to Javier to talk about more. Oh. Sorry to spoil you the fun now that we were interacting with the mood meter. I forgot the clicker. So as Essen said, we were collecting all this information all around MIT. It was real time. So we had the map, the real time heat map. We also had separate meters for each one of the locations. So you could go to the website and see real time the meters go up and down. And also we aggregated all the information on the right side. You cannot see it from here, but it's labeled as calm and euphoric. I think we were a bit optimistic when we say euphoric because I don't think we ever reached to that. Um, we also made all the data available online, so you can go and see if you can find any interesting patterns. Maybe after the talk, you can try to answer the questions, OK, what is the department that had more fun during the whole three months of installation? We were very interested in understanding the types of interaction that people had with the system and know what does that really mean. So we launched a survey at the end of the study, and 300 people answered to that. The first question, OK, did the installation make you smile? And actually, 97% of the people replied that more than expected. We also asked them about their feelings. And 76% of the people say that they, may, they felt momentarily better when interacting with the system. Actually, it was even more interesting because 
65% of the people say that they felt momentarily better by seeing others interacting with the installation. So this was definitely a social tool. Um, we like because some people describe their interaction as something very profound. It made them feel connected with other people. Actually gave them an excuse to meet and challenge the system together. There were other people that use it as a uh, self-reflection uh, tool. Before I was speaking with one of the audience members, Bill, and he told me that sometimes when he finished working, he arrived home and he realized that he was not smiling for most of his day. Um, if we are able to tell people if they're smiling or not, they can use this to change their outer appearance and change their facial expressions so they can be seen as they wanted to be seen. So some people reflected this as, I became a little bit more aware of what my projected mood was, and I smelled to make it better. Or other person. It was definitely a great way to remind yourself to smile, just like someone smiled or a baby might do. During the 10 weeks of installation, we had a lot of fun. Um, and the, we could observe like, very interesting patterns. Actually, one day, we went to the website, and we saw that there was this hot spot around MIT. Actually, this was our department, and we were so excited because we saw, wow, 90% and the others 25. So we thought there was a great party going there. Unfortunately, when we, were, when we go there to check it out, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we are from MIT. <laughs> so students just hacked the system. They wanted to reach the highest barometer so they could claim that Media Lab was the highest uh, <laughs> or the most smiley place in campus. We also found some in interesting things, like for example that our system could detect faces on animals. I don't think we can tell if they are smiling or not, but maybe feature work, who knows. Actually, they don't need to be real animals. They could be stuffed animals too, <laughs> like this uh, smiley monkey. As I told you, we had a lot of fun with this exhibition and this project, but there were also some research questions that we wanted to answer. Like, for example, can we gather any useful information from this? This is a very fun interaction, but what does it really tell? We did some data analysis, and we believe the answer is very insightful. So let me show you some examples. For example, we could see regular patterns throughout the weeks. We could see that the students smile more often during the weekends <laughs> than during the, during the week even though there was less people. We also found a strong correlation with campus events. For example, we saw that it was the lowest peak during the science period, maybe because of the lack of sleep that we were saying before. And we found the highest parameters in campus the day after graduation. Probably the day of graduation, they were too busy picking up the, the diplomas, but the day afterwards, I bet they were more relaxed. Actually, this could be the fun empirical fact that maybe getting your diploma, it might make you smile more. We are very optimistic about the possible applications of Mood Meter, and we got a lot of positive feedback. We believe that this could be used, for example, to measure the, stre the stress in a work environment. Imagine, for example, a high-level executive that doesn't have time to, inter to interact with all their employees. If he somehow could see a decrease in smiles of all their employees, and maybe when a new customer arrives, he could plan accordingly and try to improve the happiness of their employees. Also, employees could use this tool anonymously to see and to communicate with their bosses. In a different type of applications, we could use it in public speaking, like right now. Um, right now, I'm relying on the faces of some people that I'm looking, maybe the sound of laughter, or even if you're applauding. But if I could get like an aggregate estimate of the number of smiles that you have, I could know better when to inject humor, speed up, or maybe just have a pause. Mood meter uh, was both a scientific and an art exhibition. It successfully captured the emotional responses of people uh, while respecting their feelings and their privacy. We are very, very optimistic about the possible applications, and we are looking forward to our future applications where they can use it for self-discovery and greater social awareness. I hope that in the way, they take a sample of this project and they elicit many smiles too. Thank you. Thank you.